In this video, we're going to talk about how to calculate the voltage gain of this NPN transistor amplifier. So here's the formula that we need to calculate it. The voltage gain is equal to the AC collector resistance divided by the sum of the AC emitter resistance and the emitter resistor, capital RE. Well, to calculate the AC collector resistance, it's equal to RC and it's equal to the parallel combination of RC and the load resistor. Now we don't have a load resistor at the output. So in this case, the load resistor is infinity. So therefore, the AC emitter resistance is the same as capital RC, the collector resistor for this particular problem. So we have RC is 1K or 1000 ohms. Now we have RE. The emitter resistor is 100 ohms. What we need to calculate is the AC emitter resistance. And before we can do that, we need to calculate IE. By the way, the AC emitter resistance is equal to 25 millivolts divided by IE. Now, before we can calculate the emitter current, we need to calculate VE, the emitter voltage, with respect to ground. And before we could do that, we need to calculate VB and before that IB. So let's calculate the base current first. For this particular circuit, this is the formula that you need to calculate the base current. It's VCC minus VBE divided by RB plus beta plus one times RE. Now, for those of you who might be interested in how I uh, got that formula, there's another video that I created on YouTube entitled Emitter Feedback Bias Circuit, which explains how to derive that formula. For those of you who are interested, check out the links in the description section below of this video because I'll post uh, that video in that area so you can quickly take a look at that if you're wondering where to get this formula. Now VCC, the collector supply voltage, that's 9 volts. VBE, the voltage between the base and the emitter of the transistor, that's typically 0.7 volts. The base resistor, RB, that's 100 kilo ohms. Beta for this transistor is 100. So beta plus 1, that's 101. Now RE is 100 ohms, but because RB is in kilo ohms, we want the units to match. So we're going to convert that to kilo ohms. To convert ohms into kilo ohms, divide by 1,000. 100 divided by 1,000 is 0.1. So RE is 0.1 kilo ohms. So we have 9 minus 0.7. That gives us a voltage of 8.3 volts. And then 100 plus 101 times 0.1 gives us a total AC resistance, AC emitter resistance of 110.1 kilo ohms. So 8.3 divided by 110.1, that's going to be 0 0.0754 milliamps. When you divide volts by kilo ohms, you're going to get the current in milliamps. Now, there's many ways in which you can calculate IE given IB. As I mentioned before, you can calculate VB, VE, and then IE. But this is an easier way of calculating IE from IB instead of going through all those steps. IE is the sum of IC and IB. And IC is beta times IB. So if you factor out IB, IE is basically IB times beta plus 1. So that's going to be 0 0.07. 54 milliamps times 100 plus 1 or 101. So thus IE, which I'm going to write here, that's 7.615 milliamps. So now that we have the value of IE, we can now calculate the AC emitter resistance. 
So it's 25 millivolts divided by 7.615 milliamps. So 25 divided by 7.615. This will give us a resistance of 3.28, but we'll round it to 3.3 ohms. So now we can calculate the voltage gain. The AC emitter resistance is 3.3 and RE is 100. So the voltage gain, that is the ratio between the output voltage and the input voltage that's applied here, that's going to be 1,000 divided by 103.3. And so you could round that to 9.7. So that's going to be the voltage gain of this particular circuit. Now there's one more thing I do want to mention regarding this particular circuit. And that is that RE is significantly larger than the AC emitter resistance. When that happens, you can approximate the voltage gain. And assuming that RL is infinity or much higher than RC, the voltage gain is approximately equal to RC over RE. And that's a quick and simple way to approximate the voltage gain if the load resistance is very, very high relative to RC and if RE is significantly higher than the AC emitter resistance. Notice what the approximation will be. So if we take our 1 kilo ohm resistor, which is 1,000 ohms, and divide it by 100 ohms, we'll get a voltage gain of around 10, which is a good approximation of 9.7. So it's a quick and simple way to estimate what the voltage gain will be if you have an emitter resistor that is significantly higher than the AC emitter resistance. Now in this example problem, we have the voltage divider bias circuit. Beta for the transistor is 200, and we're going to say that RC is 510 ohms for this problem. RE is going to be a 220 ohm resistor. R2, we're going to set that to 47 kilo ohms, and R1 is going to be 220 kilo ohms. Now we do have a load resistor for this problem, and we're going to make it 10 kilo ohms. CB is the bypass capacitor, and for each one, we're going to make it 1,000 microfarads, so that it doesn't introduce any significant capacitive reactants to the circuit. Go ahead and calculate the voltage gain of this amplifier. And given the input voltage of the signal when the source is connected to the circuit, calculate the output voltage across the load resistor. Feel free to pause the video and try this. Now the first thing that we need to do is we need to calculate the base current. And the formula that we need to calculate the base current given a voltage divider by a circuit like what we have here, it's VCC times R2 over R1 plus R2 minus VBE divided by R2 times R1 over R1 plus R2 and then plus beta plus 1 times RE. So let's plug in everything that we have. The collector supply voltage is 12. R2 is 47 kilo ohms and the sum of R1 and R2, that's going to be 267 kilo ohms. VBE, as always, will be 0 0.7, and then R2 times R1. So 47 kilo ohms times 220 kilo ohms, divided by the sum of those two, which is 267. And then beta plus 1. Beta in this example is 200. So we have 201 times RE. And we want RE to be in kilo ohms. So dividing that by 1,000, that's going to be 0.22 kilo ohms. So 12 times 47 divided by 267 minus 0.7, that gives us a voltage of 1.412 volts. And then 47 kilo ohms times 220 kilo ohms divided by 267 kilo ohms. 
that's 38.73 kilo ohms. And then plus 201 times 0.22, we're going to get 82.95 kilo ohms. Volts divided by kilo ohms will give us the current in milliamps. So 1.412 divided by 82.95. This gives us a base current of 0 0.017 milliamps. So that's how we can calculate the base current in this example. Now that we have the base current, we can now calculate the emitter current. And as we know, the emitter current is equal to beta plus 1 times IB. So beta plus 1, that's 201. IB is 0 0.017 milliamps. So the emitter current is 3.417 milliamps. So now that we know the emitter current, we can calculate the AC resistance. The AC resistance is going to be 25 millivolts divided by the emitter current. When you divide millivolts by milliamps, you're going to get the resistance in ohms. So the AC emitter resistance is 7.32. Now the voltage gain is going to be RC over the AC emitter resistance plus the emitter resistor. Now let's calculate RC. RC is going to be the parallel combination of that RC and RL. So it's RC times RL divided by the sum of those two because this time we do have a load resistor and we need to take that into account. So RC in this example is 510 ohms. RL is in kilo ohms but we need the units to match. So to convert kilo ohms to ohms multiply by 1000. So RL is 10,000 ohms and then the sum of RC and RL that's 10,510 ohms. So thus RC is 485.3 ohms. Now notice that we have a bypass capacitor across RE. And since the bypass capacitor is 1000 microfarads, it basically shorts RE when an AC current passes through it. So RE provides resistance to the DC component that goes through it, but the AC component will effectively bypass RE. So thus we can ignore the effect of RE. It won't have any effect on the voltage gain of the circuit. So all we need to do is put the AC emitter resistance of 7.32 here. So it's 485.3 divided by 7.32. Thus the voltage gain for this circuit is 66.3. So notice the effect of the bypass capacitor. It increases the voltage gain of the circuit by decreasing the overall AC emitter resistance. Now let's calculate the output voltage of this circuit since we know the input voltage. The voltage gain is the ratio of the output voltage to the input voltage. So to calculate the output voltage, multiply the input voltage by the voltage gain. So for this circuit, we have an input voltage of 15 millivolts, and we're going to multiply it by 66.3. So the output voltage should be approximately 994.5 millivolts, or approximately 1 volt. So that's how you can calculate the output voltage given the voltage gain and the input voltage. Now one thing I do want to mention regarding the bypass capacitor, because I mentioned that adding the bypass capacitor decreases the overall AC emitter resistance, which increases the voltage gain of the circuit, which is good. However, there is one drawback. Sometimes this could lead to distortion because the gain of the entire circuit, the voltage gain, is not stabilized. Let me explain why.
So with the bypass capacitor present, the voltage gain is now RC divided by the AC emitter resistance. Now let's say that RC is 1000 and the AC emitter resistance is 4. This would be a voltage gain of 250. Now, as we have variations in the base current due to the AC signal, when the base current goes up, the emitter current will go up because the base current is proportional to the collector current and the collector current is approximately equal to the emitter current. Now keep in mind, the AC emitter resistance is 25 millivolts divided by IE. So it's inversely related to IE, which means that as IE goes up, the AC emitter resistance goes up. I mean, it goes down. Now, that is inversely related to the voltage gain. As the AC emitter resistance goes down, the voltage gain goes up. So let's say if IB doubles in value, that means IE is going to double in value approximately. And then the AC emitter resistance is going to decrease by a factor of two. So if it decreases by a factor of two, it's going to drop from four to two, which means the voltage gain is 500. Notice how much the voltage gain changed by from 250 to 500, which means it increased by 100%. So that's huge. As you can see, the gain is not stabilized. But if we have a value for capital RE, notice how the gain is stabilized. So let's say initially, the AC emitter resistance is 4, and capital RE will say it's 50. So this would be 1,000 divided by 54. So the gain will be 18.52. Now let's say that the AC emitter resistance changes from 4 to 2. Capital RE will be the same. And so now the voltage gain is 19.23. So that's a, an increase of approximately 4%, which is not that bad compared to an increase of 100%. So add in RE without the bypass capacitor, it stabilizes the gain. Now, there's a special type of amplifier known as a swamped amplifier, which is a gain stabilized amplifier. And so we're going to have two resistors at the emitter. One is going to be bypass, but the other will not be. So the circuit looks like this. So you have R1 and R2, this is RC, this is RE, and this is capital RE. And then we have our bypass capacitor. And then we have our collector supply voltage and the ground. For this particular circuit, which is called a swamped amplifier or a gain stabilized amplifier, it's going to be equal to RC. The voltage gain is RC divided by the AC emitter resistance plus this particular emitter resistance. So this one is not taken into account because it's been bypassed by CB. So with this circuit, the gain is stabilized due to the addition of this resistor. So that's how you can calculate the voltage gain of a swapped amplifier. Keep in mind, RC is the parallel combination of capital RC and the load resistor. If the load resistor is not there, it's infinity. RC is equal to capital RC. So that's it for this video. Now you know how to calculate the voltage gain of a transistor amplifier. Thanks for watching.